Welcome back to Propaganda Watch, ladies and gentlemen. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, coming to you, as always, from the sunny climes of Western Japan. But today I have for you a message of warning. It's silent. It's invisible. It's spreading all around the globe, and it's going to kill us all unless we take drastic emergency measures to clamp down on it. Am I talking about coronavirus? No. I'm talking about that nauseous, toxic, life-giving gas, carbon dioxide. Now, do you think it's a bit of a reach for me to try to connect these two agendas together, the coronavirus scare and the climate change scare? Well, don't look at me, because it's not me who's trying to connect these stories in the minds of the public. So talk about this connection between climate crisis and the coronavirus. We're not hearing very much about this. Well, we know in a general sense that climate, the climate crisis is resulting in tens of thousands of wild species moving into new places. It's scrambling our migration patterns. Um, and so that's going to contribute to this broader phenomenon of people and wildlife coming into new kinds of contact. So what is this thing called climate change? It still gets me that these invisible gases, right, are wrecking such havoc. But I think we have a parallel now with the coronavirus. How can a virus, you know, wreck such havoc? And so what scientists did was they sterilized the whole area, very clean, very scientific. They got into those ice cores and then they just wanted to see what can they find that's been locked down there in the glaciers in ice for thousands of years. Well, the experiment revealed 33 groups of virus genuses in the ice cores. Of these, 28 were previously unknown to science. Mm. So this is two little ice cores. And just in those two little random bits of ice taken out of the, this glacier, they found 28 different types of viruses that we had never seen before. And what's really cool about the ice, literally, is that those things stay in there. But when it melts, <laughs> then they can come out. And then we might become familiar with those 28 or more uh, types of viruses. So according to the study authors, the microbes deferred significantly across the two ice cores, presumably representing the very different climate conditions at the time of deposition. And they warned that in a worst case scenario, these and possibly other pathogens can be released as the climate crisis melts glaciers around the world. Yes, if you haven't noticed it by now, you are about to notice it on a large scale, specifically the connecting of one globalist-backed, agenda-pushing, scaremonger story with another globalist-backed, agenda-pushing, scare story designed to spur the public into action of various sorts, or to design more specifically to allow governments to crack down on the public in various ways, and I think it's easy to see how those two agendas go together, but we are going to see that linked in the public imagination more and more going out from here, so it's an important propaganda vector to keep your eyes on. And one way that this is starting to manifest is in a type of sibling rivalry among alarmists, I suppose, where one of the siblings is complaining that the other is getting all the attention. Do parents out there in the crowd know what that feels like? Well. We are starting to see that with regards to these twin crises, and uh, one example of that that we can take, not from Time Magazine directly, but we'll get from Time via whatsupwiththat.com, which notes that Time is noting, coronavirus is messing up pre-COP26 climate conferences, talking about, of course, the upcoming uh, climate conference season, which leads up to the big Congress of the Parties uh, in, I believe it's in December, um, where... Of course, all year they jet set around the globe, the alarmists jet set around the globe, having these chin wags about the upcoming conference. And this is the most important conference of all time to crack down on CO2 is what they say every single year. But now they're complaining, well, we all our preparatory conferences that we have before our main conference is going to be upset by this, uh, the coronavirus scaremongering. So now we can't jet around to these tropical locations to have our big conferences, and we can't fly in on our private jets and take our limos to go eat our four-star multi-course dinners while we talk about the threat that average people have by using too much toilet paper or going to the gas station or what have you. So uh, that's one aspect of this. And another way that this is playing out is in stories like this one from fastcompany.com, what would happen if the world reacted to climate change 
like it's reacting to the coronavirus, which notes uh, executive director of climate advocacy group 350.org, which probably deserves its own propaganda watch special or perhaps an entire episode of the corporate podcast. But uh, May Bove says, we've seen that governments can act in the face of the coronavirus crisis, for example, and people can change their behavior in a very short amount of time. And that's exactly what the climate movement has been asking governments and people to do for years in the face of a different kind of threat, the climate crisis. And we don't see commensurate action. So you get the tenor of that type of propaganda vector that's uh, that's being played out right now, which is, well, if we can take such drastic emergency lockdown, martial law, the world is ending action against coronavirus, then surely we can do it against this other hyped scaremongering story that we've been pushing for decades, right? And there are, as I say, no end to the amount of examples of people essentially complaining. Well, if you can do it in that crisis, surely you can do it in this other crisis. This is what 17-year-old climate activist Greta Thunberg's weekly school strikes usually look like. And this is what they looked like Friday, after the Swedish teen called on fellow climate activists to move their weekly rallies online due to the coronavirus. Thunberg, founder of the Fridays for Future movement, earlier this week urged young people on Twitter to join a digital strike by posting photos of themselves online and using hashtags such as climate strike online. Thunberg wrote, quote, we'll have to find new ways to create public awareness and advocate for change that don't involve too big crowds. In response to the coronavirus, the world has jumped into action. We've seen restrictions on travel, we've seen factories shutting down, quarantines, and we've seen a huge surge of scientific research on this topic. In other words, we've seen huge, rapid structural changes to try and combat this threat. And that is not the case for climate change. Stopping climate change also requires big structural changes. But when we talk about what needs to be done, we're often met with disbelief, even with anger. These are quite fascinating times. Um, what, what surprises me most is that the measures that we are ready to take to face this coronavirus are much more severe than the measures that we would be ready to take to face climate change or atmospheric pollution. As I say, sibling rivalry. Well, how come you can get all concerned about that crisis, but you're not getting all concerned about our crisis? Yeah, as I say, you will notice that more and more as this plays out, but more insidious and more revealing of the real climate change agenda and what that has always been about is going to manifest in the ways that these different different scaremongering stories are actually connected in what they want to accomplish in terms of changing your behavior. As the executive director of 350.org said in that article I quoted earlier. And this can be quite blatant and in your face. You don't exactly have to be a propaganda expert to discern what some of these people are saying. Case in point, the Sunday Times recently published an op-ed from Ed Conway called Coronavirus Can Trigger a New Industrial Revolution. The disease could be the shock we need to harness new technology and new ways of working. And this article starts by noting, don't take this the wrong way, but if you were a young hardline environmentalist looking for the ultimate weapon against climate change, you could hardly design anything better than coronavirus. Unlike most other such diseases, it kills mostly the old who, let's face it, are more likely to be climate skeptics. It spares the young. Most of all, it stymies the forces that have been generating greenhouse gases for decades. Deadly enough to terrify, containable enough that aggressive quarantine measures can prevent it from spreading. The rational response for any country determined to prevent loss of life is to follow China's lead and lock down their economy to stem its spread. Hardcore climate activists have long railed against economic growth, and in the months ahead, they may have their wish granted, as GDP growth from China to Europe and the US is hammered by coronavirus. And he goes on to say that this is no 
normal economic slump. No, this is a complete and fundamental change in the way that people are going to work from here on forward that is being at least put on the table. And it may not be completely ramrodded through with this particular round of bio-warfare scaremongering, but maybe the next one or the one after that, at some point, people's entire way of life is likely to be fundamentally changed by these types of scares, just exactly in line with what the climate change scaremongers have been saying all along. So look with the silver lining on this gray cloud, guys. Even if this is a horrible disease that is going to wipe out a huge portion of the population, or even if it isn't and we're just telling people that to get to freak them out about it, anyway, it clamps down on that dastardly, horrible economic growth and pro human productive activity. So it's kind of a win for the climate. The virus has emptied the streets of China's megacities, and manufacturing has slowed. Drastic quarantine measures implemented by Chinese authorities have resulted in significantly cleaner air, as this graphic from the World Meteorological Organization shows. China is now emitting 25% less greenhouse gas, a small victory against global warming. We've seen with the drastic measures that China has taken with regard to corona that emissions have gone down seriously. So people are working from home, manufacturing has slowed down. So these are the kinds of drastic measures that we will have to take for climate change and it's better to do it kind of sooner rather than later because it'll be more painful the longer we wait. I really want you to look at the way that this is going to be shoved down your throat in the coming weeks and months. Because it will be, I guarantee it. And if you have your eyes open, you will see it. They're going to talk about the need to completely restructure the way that we live our lives, the way that we work, how we, how we interact with other people or don't interact with other people. It's better to interact online because in actual physical meat space, you can contract diseases from people. There is a change that is going to be pushed in the way that we think of social interaction in the way that we think about working and living and eating and shopping and everything else that it is we do. And it is going to serve the interests of people who for a very long time have been talking about the need to corral us into little spaces where we can be controlled. And But of course, within those spaces, we have to be basically quarantined from each other. So you, you, might, have, you might live in a cramped apartment block in the middle of a rural in a, in a urban area, but you'll be isolated within your little block. And you won't certainly interact with neighbors. You won't go and talk to other people. Your kids won't play with other people. It will all be done virtually. It'll all be done remotely. And it'll all be controlled and rationed and apportioned so that there's no too, not too much of this pesky economic growth and activity that gets in the way and gets uh, interferes with climate or whatever it is, or, or causes disease to spread or, or whatever, whatever. Just stop that economic activity. Stop being independent from the chains that we've put around you. And if you think I'm joking, no, this is explicitly what the long-term agenda has been for years. And how far is it from what people are saying about the future under this coronavirus scaremongering regime and the future that was presented, for example, at the Forum for the Future Action for a Sustainable World conference a few years ago, which had their video about mega cities on the move and eco-life in the planned opolis. Hi. I'm so glad you're on time. I'm V. I'm looking forward to showing you around Planopolis today. My husband works from home. He's a virtual engineer working on one of the city's desalination plants. He controls the robots who do all the important maintenance. I think he basically plays computer games for a living. <laughs> you ready to go? Have you got your calorie card open on your smartphone? I registered your visit with Slick Travel Corp the other day, so they've uh, allotted you a journey time to, to match mine. It makes so much sense, doesn't it? Switch off brain and go to work. <laughs> with this many people around, I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. We're so lucky. Uh, our kids were allocated a school quite near my practice so I can drop them off on the way. It saves on our calorie ration. Well, it won't be long until the little darlings get their career announcements. They've been working so hard, so I'm sure they'll get something good. N not that there's anything wrong with fixing carbon scrubbers for a living or anything. Are you hungry? Let's pop to the market as we're passing. Right, what's on the menu this month? No, not meat. It's not your birthday. 
The Global Food Council are doing a really good job of keeping food production going. I mean, you don't get the choice you used to, but we're better off than most. I think it's probably easiest to walk from here. You barely see a car in the city centre nowadays, unless you're rich. <laughs> well, the state knows they just aren't practical anymore. We're all trying to meet our global carbon deal. Electric bikes are so much better for getting around our neighbourhood. And why waste valuable space on car parks when you can use them to grow food? I don't care what you say, Alex. They don't deserve to live in that ghetto. They are completely disconnected. No high-speed transport system, no new internet. They miss out on jobs and many essential services too. Oh, <laughs> hi again. <laughs> what a day. I had to make a, an emergency visit to the Cry Freedom ghettos. I mean, I miss my sister like mad, but I'm glad they went when they moved to New Amsterdam. They're safe from climate change on the floating city. <laughs> that must be her now. It's much easier to meet up with friends virtually now. Well, so many cities have banned cars in central areas. Ooh, looks like she's got some juicy gossip. Yes, folks. This is a game for all the marbles. This is a huge part of the end game, and it is being pushed with twin scaremongering agendas that are going to be linked in the public imagination. Whatever it takes to get to the planned opolis of the future, they will push. So if climate change doesn't do it, maybe coronavirus will scare you enough. There are profound changes that are going to be pushed in the public consciousness, and you are going to, if you haven't already, you are going to see that reflected in the propaganda that will be pushed on the public uh, in short order. Uh, so keep your eyes open. This is part of what the Propaganda Watch series is about. It is to let you know this is going to be a big propaganda push. Keep your eyes open. Notice it when it's happening. Inform others. Because, again, like any good magician's trick, if you tell people about the... What's up the, the magician's sleeve before the trick happens? It's not quite so impressive and people don't go along with it. That is, that is one part of the reason why we do this Propaganda Watch series. So I hope you take this information on board. And again, even if you haven't seen this or noted this consciously yet, I guarantee you will start to notice it. And uh, when you do, Corporate Report members, please log in. Leave your uh, links and, and uh, observations in the comment section. Let's keep our eye on this because I think this is a huge part of the agenda that's unfolding right now. Anyway, just leaving you with that thought for today. I hope uh, you take this information and make something of it. I'll be back very shortly on CorbettReport.com with more information and updates. I hope you'll be there to join me. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. <laughs>